Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Invisible Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Welcome to the Invisible Podcast, probably the best superhero podcast in the universe. I'm your host, TJ, and with me is Bill. Hello, everyone. What's up, Bill? Not too much. How's life? Tell me a story. Tell you a story. Tell me a story. Uh, I am going to the Struts concert on the 10th in Rochester, New York. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting story. (laughs) Where uh, I asked you to go four months ago, and you kept uh, putting it off and putting it off, and then all of a sudden you want to go, like, three days before the concert. So So here's a story. We went to the Struts. Before they were the struts, last year. I mean, so, they were the struts, but they no were the struts, but no one, were. no one knew. If you would be like, "Hey, have you ever heard this?" Some people are like, "No, what's that?" So we went, met them, had an awesome time, best show that I've ever been to. I still, I still say that. I know it's been a long time. We saw thrice in the meantime, and I still think that it was. My sister got tickets. Said, "What are you doing on the 10th? Or no, no, no. She said, "I'm going." Then her husband couldn't go. She invited me to go, and now I'm going. So I apologize, TJ, live yeah. on the air. Yeah. I'm going to see the struts again. But you're going... I just bought a ticket because you're... Cause, yeah, because you're not going without me. <laughs> All uh, right. Yeah, I'm uh, officially all caught up on Walking Dead now. Because um, you were like a year behind. Yeah, I was about a year behind. Oh, actually, more than that. I'm all caught up now, which is good. I know we talked about that on previous mm-hmm. podcasts, so... So would you yeah. agree or would you disagree when we talked last time that this arc that you're in right now is the best arc that there's been since... I said since... Uh, Woodbury. Uh, I guess, yeah, I, I guess I would agree with that. My opinion on the comic is, is pretty much the same as my opinion on the show. And that is, like, I'm only really interested in Negan and everything else I could care less about. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, everything with Negan is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we won't talk too much about it because we, we don't want to get into spoilers um, for people who haven't read the comic or even watched the show or whatnot. So, um, Interest, yeah. Interesting it's, fact, though, and I... I fucking me. love this shit. Are you reading everywhere that this season alone, and it's not even the full season through, has lost 6.5 yes. million viewers? You know what I think it is? I think it's just not cool to like The Walking Dead show anymore. And I think that people, I, I think that that's what it is because I we always agreed, and maybe it's because we did read the comics, that we, we never really cared for the show as much as others mm-hmm. did. But what's funny is that I, re- I was reading co- uh, comments online um, about how people, how much people hated this show, and people are like, "It's ridiculous how they're like switching off, and they're this and that, and it's it's just as bad as like second season is how long they waited to find Sophia." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, second season was like breaking we- records. What are you guys talking about? Like, mm-hmm. People loved it. Now they're talking shit about it, and I just think that that's funny. And now well, because it was a zombie they're, show, they're hating it, and I think the show is actually, I mean, still not great, but probably better than it's been in a long time, and people are hating it. I've heard two things. People don't like the gore and how brutal it was it's a zombie when show. Glenn got killed. People don't like that for some reason. And then <clears throat> why I fucking hate it is that it just it takes a whole episode and it just wastes time. They're like, okay, we have to drag out an entire season, so let's just create bullshit that's not even in the comic. Like, do the comic book. It's successful for a reason, and they're and they're straying off of it too much. And I, dude, I, I had the smuggest smile on my face when I read that they lost six point five million viewers. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god! But it's about fucking time. I think what they're trying to do, like obviously that we knew that they were going to make changes based off of like these are real people, they're <clears> actors, <throat> they're they're going to have other projects, they're going to. But at, for the most part, they should have stick stuck to the comic. But I think that what they were trying to do is they were trying to make it. Um, unpredictable for the people who have read the comic and i just don't think that that was the right by making it go. boring though by making yeah, it boring like it's, it's too boring it's too dead it's like there's too many too dead there's oh, oh no walking it's a little too all right anyways why are we here tj yeah so this is if you could if you didn't know it's the invincible podcast where we talk about all things invincible uh comic book written by robert kirkman uh but today we're going to be doing like a, a side story not really a side story it's its own comic but it's in the Invincible Universe. It's called The Astounding Wolfman. We're going to be kind of reviewing the first uh, volume, soft cover, Which is the first novel. seven issues. First seven issues, yep. yeah. So, yeah. So, I'm excited. Um, we already read this in its entirety um, a long time ago. But I'll be honest, I don't remember, like, 
anything I, really. I don't remember about the it. end. Do you know the last time? The very when the when the I don't remember the end either. Um, do you remember? Do you know when the last comic of Wolf Wolfman came out? The end. I'm gonna came guess. Out? I'm gonna guess. Guess. It's 2016 right now, right? Yes. The end of 2016. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say 2000 and. 12? 2010. November wow. 2010. Six years ago? Yeah. Dude, it feels like oh, this is still a new thing, yeah. doesn't it? That's weird. Yeah. And it, Six years ago. So it debuted. What were we doing like six years ago? That's and, insane. I don't know. Probably not having a kid. That's for sure. Spending a lot of money on comic books. Well, not the first issue. So Wolfman debuted in 2007, which and it was free comic book day. And... Um, I, We'll get into this at the end of issue two because in the letters column it actually talks about this, but it was it they actually printed and handed out more issues of number one Wolfman than Invincible, and they sold more issues of Wolfman number two than Invincible at the time when mm-hmm. it was printed. Mm-hmm. So in there, I, and we'll, we'll again we'll get into it, but just super interesting. Like it started out extremely successful, more successful than Invincible was, and well, then it died. I think that by the time Wolfman came out in 2007, Robert Kirkman was starting to get a name because Invincible had been out for, what, like five years? Mm-hmm. Walking Dead had been out for maybe three or four years, um, and Walking Dead was blowing up about that time. So when he started Wolfman, he was already kind of gaining a name. So I, I, I get that. I mean, like, if you if you look now, like, oh, man, Outcast did way better than Invincible, but of course it did yeah. because it's Robert Kirkman. So Well, I think a lot of it, too, was the draw. Like, if you... It was a free comic book, right? So everybody got it. Yeah. Everybody got it, and the art was just hit or miss. You know what I mean? And it was so interesting because you're like, "Is this a kids comic?" Is, it, and you don't know until you open it up. What's like, funny you don't is know. that um, that you say that is when you say the art was hit or miss. I was gonna be like, "What do you mean?" Like, I, I love the art, but you're right. It looks like a kids comic, but this is the kind of comic where you kind of fall in love with the art as you go. Uh, Jason 100%. Howard is the um, is the artist on this on this book and, and the inkist and the colorist he did all of it oh i didn't know he was the colorist yep all of it nice um yeah so it's, you kind of as you did learn I say, to love the did book did i say inkist you did say inkist inker inker he's the yeah. inker i didn't catch that <laughs> i would have made fun of you for it well, you can now inkist what he's the idiot. inkist You're so stupid and I the and you. the colorer he's the colorer the inkist and the drawer Dra- he's the drawer he's the drawer he's the drawer yeah uh, yeah, so it's been a long time since we read it, and I think it's good that we kind of don't really remember, mm-hmm. um, going forward. Like, uh, obviously we just reread the first seven issues, and that's all we've read, right? I didn't read anything more, because I, I didn't want to, I wanted it to be like... Uh, I do remember bits and pieces here and there, but... The big parts. We, yeah, so, yeah. um, yeah, if you haven't read Astounding Wolfman, um, uh, I mean, feel free to listen to this podcast, and we'll, we'll we're gonna go through it, but, um... Yeah, uh, I definitely recommend you read it. Maybe you want to read it and then come back to this podcast. We can go over it together. I think that if you've got old issues of it, and if you haven't read it in a long time... Break it out. Pull it out right now, because we're going to talk about specific panels, we're going to talk about specific pages, and all that stuff. But before we dig into the actual volume and like the specific details of that, let's talk a little bit about Jason Howard and his history with Robert Kirkman. So, you, you I mean... He essentially, Robert Kirkman, didn't even know who this guy was. Right. Like up until they started working together. And um, they they met at a con, I think, and Jason Howard did a pinup. Of, Jason Howard was like an up and coming artist. And right. He, yeah. Maybe not even that. Like He was like he, an artist alley uh, yeah. at a Comic Con and, and had a pinup up that Robert Kirkman saw. Right. And Robert Kirkman said, you know, I'll, I'll post it or print it, like, if it doesn't suck. And um and it didn't suck and he and he loved it he said he loved the the coloring the the inking and and it's essentially it's a picture and if you Google it it's um just Google uh, Jason Howard Invincible, but it's him swooping through like a drive-in and stealing someone's like Burger King bag and drink, um, but I guess Kirkman was so impressed with that that he was started Googling like who Jason Howard was and looking at his art and stuff like that and and some time passed and then um. Jason Howard's son was a fan of Science Dog from Invincible, and Jason Howard had done a pinup or a drawing of of Science Dog, and the quote in the first volume of the introduction of, that Robert of the introduction, wrote. and yeah, so um, let's see, uh, I was in the middle of developing it further when Jason sent along his glorious Science Dog pinup. I thought Science Dog has fur. 
Jason drew him very well. Werewolves have fur. Maybe this is my guy. And the rest, they say, is history. Typical Kirkman, but um, he, he, he really uh, talks about how this, this comic book wouldn't have happened. And Jason Howard is a co-creator of this. Yeah. So he had a he had a very large hand in in its creation, and um, yeah. I'm let's dig in. What's What's funny too is uh, if you go to the back page of the, um, like, at the end of the soft cover graphic novel, there's there's like a whole bunch of um kind of concept art, and what was funny is that they they asked him for the concept art, and Jason Howard was like, oh, yeah, I got the perfect idea, and sent him an email of a wolf's body with just Rick's head. It, it looks like a it's human Gary. head on a dog. It's Gary's, it's Gary's head. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. What did I say? Rick. Oh, I meant Gary. Um, with Gary's head on it. And it just it's just ridiculous. And he was, like, very serious. But, I mean, he was joking, but he made it out to mm-hmm. be like he was serious. And Kirkman was like, what the hell is this? And then he, it was just very funny. So if you have the soft cover graphic novel, take a look in the back. It's oh, it shows fun, the science funny. dog, too. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of concept art for um, for Wolfman in the back. A lot where it kind of look, kind of looks oh, like a vampire dude, look, okay. bat. All right, he, he does. Look at look at. Okay, so if you just first glance again, look at any of Jason Howard's art of Wolfman. Very solid lines. Not a ton of detail. Like the it's, it's characters mostly are very the, elongated, and it's mostly in the shading and stuff like that. But I mean, very thick lines. It look he he could do like an animated TV show and it would be awesome like don't you think our, yeah. like um Batman animated series yeah like it's very similar in the style yeah it is and i think that's what's or so the intri- batman the or the batman oh yeah the batman was good too yeah the the batman i think looks yeah. a lot like that yeah um that was from the same creator of the Jackie Chan oh, cartoon yeah. which yeah. was fucking awesome it was <laughs> was awesome but uh i think that's what's so intriguing is that it looks so much like a kids cartoon but is so adult and gory that it's almost like when you're a kid and you're reading something, you're like, I wonder what would happen if Batman punched a guy so hard and broke his nose and blood went everywhere. Well, this kind of like fulfills that fantasy. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like all comic books are like that now. All comic books are very adult. Right, but this looks like a kid's comic. Right. But is right. very adult. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, so we'll dive into the first issue. I felt like my my... Um, opinion on the first issue is, is it, I, it was very similar to Invincible in the way that it's feels kind of rushed. They're really trying to get to the story. Like um, the very first page is him getting um, attacked, or not, or the, after him getting attacked. Um, he's on the ground and he's like writhing in pain, and uh, his wife is there crying, and um, the ambulance is coming, and you know you turn to page two and mm-hmm. it's just one one full page of. Um, him saying, you know, if, it feels pretty bad, and he's just completely just mauled and yeah. just blood everywhere. And this is when you know you're like, oh, okay, there's going to be some shit in this comic book, right? Yeah, yeah. Second I, page, and it's just. All I bloody. thought the same exact thing when I was rereading it, because when I was reading it the first time, I didn't feel this way at all. I was just like, oh, a new Robert Kirkman book, like super excited. Um, but a lot of it felt like. And, I, and, and correct me if I'm using the wrong term, but exposition. It felt like they're they're describing what's happening to them, very cliche comic book like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Zachariah is always explaining something and like explaining the hows and whys, and like Gary's explaining his environment. Like no, there's no real like, I don't want to say character development or like. Right, they they character... rush you into it for right. sure. Right, and all of a sudden, like him and Zachariah, there there's one part. Well. There, I mean, there's one part in it where uh, his wife is like, how do you even trust this guy and blah, 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 blah. And Gary's like, I've been training with him for the past three weeks. I know him better than most people have him. Like, that is kind of dumb. That's like three weeks and you're best friends with this guy. You trust him for no reason other than the fact that he's a vampire. Yeah. So, I mean, he's he's in the hospital. He wakes up, you know, and, you know, everything is, is good. Uh, they're... They're freaking out because they're basically saying, you know, a lot needs to happen. You're going to have to, uh, it's going to take a long time for you to recover here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the nurse and, and doctors are, are talking outside of the, um, outside of his room. Uh, and then the first full moon happens. The first full moon happens and he starts, you know, again, writhing in pain. He's changing. He jumps out the window uh, and it shows Boom. the wolfman for the first time. Um, and what a fucking... Oh my God! That he, Jason Howard, draws action so well, like moving action, 
And I don't. I'm not talking about just like punching somebody, but like look at the top right panel of this. The shadow. Of this full, the shadow of him all stretched out, and you could imagine the motion and him. Be, and then boom, he grabs onto the side of the building. Like it just looks awesome. And uh, there's something about like the movement of Wolfman throughout this entire comic book is awesome from Jason Howard. Like he just draws action so well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he goes out. He's jumping and and you know he hits the ground and concrete just flies everywhere. He's just telling like it's fucking showing badass. how strong he is, you know. Um, and there's a man uh, in the garden. In the in the garden. There's a man. There's a man yeah. in the garden. It's a woman. No, no, it's a girl. There's a girl in the garden. Yeah, Shaun of the Dead. Everybody. Yeah, good reference. Um, and he attacks the man. But you don't see him kill him. Right. Like, you, you assume. I think that that's important, the fact yeah. that you don't actually see him kill him. Well, they talk about He just, about like, it. jumps towards him, and the guy screams, and then it it cuts back to the hospital, where the nurse and the doctor are talking about how, he again... He skin grabs. Uh, yeah, and... a lot of stuff needs to happen. Then they open up the door to his room, and Gary's sitting there, smiling. Um, I want to go home. Yeah. I'm ready to go uh, home. He's got no scarring. He's, he's, he's perfectly normal and says he's ready to leave. All right. So then you go to that. Now we find out a little bit more about Gary and what he's all about. So he owns his own business. He's got a little money. He lives in like a mansion with a yeah. huge gate. And so he owns a public, um, well, it's a public now company. And he talks about he's trying to get a merger um, with China. And it looks like the business is plummeting. Like you can see in one of the panels, like stock prices are, are dripping or dropping down substantially. And the whole point is people think that this was a publicity stunt because he was in a coma for uh, how how long? A month? Uh, I I think it was about a month because if you... He he changed it into a wolf, and he changes into a wolf once a month. And well, I think he's about to change again, like, within, the, like, that night or the next couple of days. So I think it was about a month. Well, no, it says... So from the hospital, it says one month later, the Hampton yeah. Estate. Yeah. But they they talk about him being in a coma for a month was a publicity stunt to, to I don't know get more business you you don't even really know what his business is you just know that it's kind of like a, a mixture between Batman and yeah you don't really know we don't really know what Bruce Wayne does at I mean, Wayne he, Tower he runs Wayne Enterprises and what they, do they do they do Wayne Enterprise stuff they do like. Everything. everything like everybody has their hand in Wayne Enterprises. I don't think that that's the case with his business, right. but yeah, but it's right. kind of the same thing where you don't really understand what he does, but it's okay. So he's got a daughter named Chloe, who's kind of a prissy little bitch. Well, no, opinion. she's she's a teenager. If she's she's a realistic teenager. So this is interesting because it comes up later, but it shows Gary and Rebecca sleeping and. Um, she talks about his day and how he's stressed out. And then if you look at the bottom, how they're sleeping like apart. So obviously there's, there's there was trouble. trouble there before yeah. the wolf incident. Right. Right. Which comes up or a little bit assume. later. Uh, that night he changes again and goes out. Um, we show him as Wolfman, but he's got his shorts on. Um, kills a rabbit. And he kills a rabbit. When he comes back the next day, uh, he's in bed and wakes up and his wife is like, what the hell happened to your shorts? You're, you're, it's all ripped up. And then, um, I mean, Gary's so rich that he has a butler. And his name is Dunford, who ends up being kind of a main character of this comic. Mm-hmm. Um, I a really, really main I character. I really, really like Dunford. He's one of my favorite characters. Right. Um, and they're like, he's like, guys, you need to see the security cameras from last night. So they look at the security cameras and see the, a gigantic wolf running around with Gary's ripped up shorts on. And Rebecca's like, dude, you're 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 shorts, holy shit, like you know It's obviously it's you. obviously you. Yeah. And they kinda realize it. But this this goes to the point of this almost going too fast. It's it's rushed. It yeah. is. So I, I like the fact that it wasn't like a secret and it wasn't like a big yeah, reveal. Yeah, I like that, that they've, re- you know, they, everybody knows. I mean, it's halfway through the first well, issue. Well, the family knows. But, and then the next page. The very next page, after is, he finds out. Is, well, he wasn't mauled by a bear. That much is certain, and it's Zachariah just sitting in his, standing in his house, yeah. and they're like, "Who, you know, who the hell are you?" And I'm Zachariah, um, and he's like, "I want to help you. I've been watching you, and I want to train you because you you have raw power and all this other stuff." Again, um, 
I know a thing or two about the supernatural. And that's how the first issue ends, is with you finding out that Zachariah a is a vampire. He's got red eyes, you know, and teeth. And sharp teeth. He's got teeth. Yeah, he's I'll, got a I'll be honest with you, though. The first time I read this comic, I thought, oh, he's also a werewolf. Because it shows the, the eyes and the teeth, but I thought that he was like, he can control like change. Happened. Like he was, yeah, he was changing yeah. a little bit. Right. So, I mean, um, I actually remember talking to you guys about it. And you guys are like, oh, no, I think he is a vampire. And we kind of talked about that. Um, yeah, that was the end of issue one. So I think the first two issues were pretty rushed before it actually got more and more right. deeper into the story. Yeah. So here, let me grab let me grab issue two. And I want to read just a part, the beginning of the letters column, which is, you know what's awesome? Looking at the, the ads... In of the back Invinci- of these. Like Invincible ads? Yeah. And seeing where we where issue Invincible 50. was. Issue 50. This yeah. was It was promoting issue 50 of Invincible and hardcover volume 3. All right. Welcome to issue 2 of The Astounding Wolfman, which in many ways for me is kind of like the first issue, seeing as how we gave the first issue away for free. Speaking of that, this book has been an overwhelming success thus far. Just thought I'd let you guys and gals know. Issue 1 was Image's highest ordered free comic book day offering ever. Yes, retailers order the books just like any other comic. Also, it had by far the highest number of distributed copies out of anything I've done thus far. Yes, including Marvel Zombies and Ultimate X-Men. This is kind of amazing. Yeah. Um, There's a ton of Wolfman ones out there. Now, if you consider the second issue to be essentially the first issue, the initial orders on this book were three times higher than the initial orders on The Walking Dead and twice what they were on Invincible in parentheses, yes, Invincible initially debuted higher than The Walking Dead. So we're doing really good, really good. Why am I talking about this? Well, in non-corporate creator-owned comics, I know it's frustrating to support a book that gets canceled prematurely. Funny that we're reading that now. And yeah. It got fucking canceled prematurely. Um, it had an end, didn't it? Yeah, did it, it has an end. Okay. Yeah, they knew that they were going right. to uh, And sadly, it does happen far too often, so I like to keep readers posted on how a book is doing in the early stages so that they can read in peace with no worries that the next issue may never come. So what's exciting is that every single issue of Wolfman gets better and better and better and better and better. Right, just like every Robert Kirkman issue pretty much. Or, um... Yeah, but I think overall, like, the Comic. first issue wasn't anything spectacular. Right. Like, the big reveal was a vampire. You're like, okay, yeah. like, cool. There's some blood in it. He's a werewolf. Like, it didn't even show him in costume. It didn't show yeah. really anything. So, second issue starts with him and Zachariah training. Yeah, right and a couple bat. months have passed. Now, weeks. Or weeks have couple, passed. Three weeks have passed. Uh, and they're on the rooftop training, talking about, you know, Zachariah, Zachariah obviously knows about werewolves and, and this kind of stuff and ordeals so you know gary trusts him and what's cool is that gary can transform whenever he wants to at night it's not only during a full moon the full moon once a month is when he rages out he loses control he can't control himself right but he doesn't know that yet at this point right you find out at the end of this issue the, the end of this issue but like, because at first you're like, oh, well, how does he transform? Again, like, stuff that I feel like they could have talked about. You know what I mean? Like, him learning to transform the first time, I feel like that could have been a cool scene. You know, all that stuff. Yeah. But he just talks, I mean, Zachariah talks about how Gary won the, the supernatural lottery because he really doesn't have any weaknesses. He doesn't have a thirst, like, for blood. Sun won't kill him. Like, all he does is have super strength and hand senses. He can heal. Like, all he has to do is transform back to his human form and then back to wolf form, and he heals. Um, yeah, so, I mean, he, he talks about how he's he plans to use this kind of, um, what's the word, uh, this disaster as a, a user curse. for good. Yeah, a curse, he calls for, it a curse yeah. for, for good. Zachariah <laughs> calls it a curse. Um and, and use it for good and kind of save lives and, and, and do what he can. So In a more tangible way, because he says how he donates millions of dollars to tra- charities, but he wants to actually give back yeah. like, in he a said, more tangible way. But what he's way. been doing you know, with Zechariah and saving people, it, it just feels right. Yeah, it's so weird, though. Reading it a second time, I was just like, man, all this seems so unrealistic. I, I don't know why, like just how quick it was moving. You know, with him training and, and him deciding to be a superhero right off the bat. Wouldn't you be like, I'm yeah. a fucking werewolf. Like, what am I going to do? 
what am I going to do with my life? And his wife is just cool with it. She's not cool, but she's like, she never trusts Zachariah. She, I mean, she asks the questions that we all ask, like, you don't know this guy. And that's when Gary was like, I've known him for three weeks. We're BFFs forever. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about, like, Invincible, mm-hmm. Invincible was, like, in his costume fighting crime, I think, in the second issue, second or third issue. Yeah, but he's a superhero. He has superpowers. His but dad's so a superhero. Is, but, yeah, but Gary's I Gary's mean, a fucking werewolf. Well, yeah, but at the same time, it might be rushed to us, but it's been a, it's already been three weeks, you know what I mean? Oh, Since, that's interesting to talk about. This comic was... Actually, it's been more than that. It's been, like... Two months. So this comic, how do you say it? Bi-monthly? Oh, yeah, it came out bi-monthly. So not twice a month, but every two months is when it came out, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. So we, we waited quite a while for this comic book, and, and yeah. it was like that for a while. I think for at least the first seven issues. Well, yeah, but still, mm-hmm. like, uh, <clears throat> even bi-monthly comes out more often than Invincible. We only got, like, four issues, four new issues this 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 entire year. Was that like, is true. Well, five. What? Yeah, five issues all year. So... Think about that. Yeah, we had we had that break from December all the way up until March. Yeah, and then we we actually didn't even start the Invincible podcast until March. Um, yeah. Hmm. Well, interesting. So shows him. Uh, he has so much fucking money that he can do this. Dug a gigantic hole in the earth and is building a layer, essentially. And he walks up to Dunford, who is overseeing the entire project, and he says, "How are things progressing, Dunford? See for yourself, sir." Uh, he says, I'm not entirely comfortable with this, sir. The trance these workers are in, so they don't remember this. It's just, I know your vampire friend insists it won't do them any harm, but it doesn't feel right to me. I appreciate your concern for these men being well paid. They think they're building a mall, and when they get started on the shopping center we're going to build above this place, it won't be a lie. Zachariah assures me there's not going to be any side effects. So, Zachariah hypnotized people into doing this construction at least for them. at least 50 people at least 50 people to to doing but that's I'm sure it's more than that like how much construction is going on so wouldn't you instantly say and granted it's Gary Gary's funding it he's paying for it right but wouldn't if you if you were is Gary is he paying for it yeah or are these all these people in a trance no you know he's I mean? paying they, for it they're they being well they're trans. being well paid oh okay yeah mm. so but again more reason for me not to ever trust Zachariah and they hold on to that for a long time. Well, not really a long time. What's that? The trans stuff? No, like him and Zachariah being friends going and trusting and each other. Uh, they kind of do. Yeah. So then you get more action, more awesome action the next night. Wolfman is jumping out of a burning building, holding two kids, and very typical monster movie where like everybody's like, oh, stop, monster. And he's like, oh, I'm just trying to help. And then so people are starting to see him as a hero. Which is cool, because he's kind of elusive. Like even the superheroes are like, "Oh, I've 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 seen you do like good things out there." Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, where are we going? If you're really going to do this, this is Zachariah talking about if you're really going to be a hero. Because right. right now he's just Save wearing lives. sweatpants. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, you're going to need to look the part. Follow me. And this is where we get our first connection to Invincible. Mm-hmm. They go to um, uh, the tailor shop of Art Rosenbaum, which is where Invincible got his costume. Um, and Art is basically saying, you know, I was when I first got the call, I was I, I didn't really know anything about you. Um, I didn't know if you were good or bad, so like I, I turned you down, but once I saw you on the news saving saving people's lives, I, I changed my mind. Mm-hmm. The coolest thing about his costume and you know they, they talk about it I think afterwards is the the discs on his wrists and what they're yeah, actually they absorb for? They moonlight. They absorb moonlight. And do you remember Art made a costume originally for Invincible? And he's like, "Oh, I made those to absorb sunlight." Yeah, but you won't really need heart. those because I didn't know if your father's power was um, based on the sunlight. Right. So it's the same and technology. That, that costume ended up going to bulletproof. Bulletproof. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. But that's a cool. That's a cool connection. Like it's it's very. Yeah, it's like the opposite of that too. Um, what's funny too is that I, I, his, uh, knee pads, I just feel like are very invincible. Like, yeah, yeah, they are. How do you like his costume? I really like his costume a lot. I do too. I, I like everything about it. I like it. the straps that go up, how it's like kind of, it kind of looks like a bulletproof vest kind of thing. I love the symbol. Yeah. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. It looks super functional. Like it's just 
pants, like, you know, like spandexy Scots stuff that's gauntlets. underneath of them. And the only thing that's like, you know, made of any material isn't really going to stop him from moving. Like yep. it just makes, it's a costume that makes sense. And you're right. Yeah. That chess piece looks awesome too. Again, Jason Howard doing a fantastic job. And then we get our first introduction to, who are these guys called again? The Actioneers. Yes. So uh, the Actioneers, we've seen them bits and pieces in Invincible. They always show up like whenever there's like a big collaboration fight. Mm -hmm. I think that they were a part of the... um, Flaxon? When... when, uh, yeah, the Flaxon fight when they when they all came back and they were fighting them with the Guardians of the Globe were there. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure, like issue ninety like three ish, when Invincible didn't even have when uh, Mark didn't have his powers. Because I know the capes show up often, yep. and I know obviously the Guardians show up, you know often in Invincible, right. but I don't remember seeing... I mean, they look familiar, but they look familiar to me from Wolfman. Maybe. So did they make an appearance in Invincible after Wolfman premiered? Yes. It would have been It would have been way after. Oh, well, then there 90 you go. 90-something, because um, Invincible, like you, like you said, right now, um, the advertisements are like issue 50 right now, mm-hmm. but I, I think it was around Invincible like 91 when the Flaxons came back, like after Rexplode came back. And they were Dude. kind of referencing what happened in the Flaxon dimension when they were like they took over and ruled. Was it the Flaxon dimension? I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's right because if you think about how this ends, in like four issues, which we'll get to. Yeah. I don't think that that's possible. Do you remember? Do, do you remember? You remember? What ha- do you remember what happens after the seven issues? Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, I don't. I don't. Okay, well, we'll talk about it. All right. Okay, obviously. But I don't think, I mean, we need to go too much into here. So you see the blue guy, the minotaur guy, um, s- sergeant, whatever. Sergeant mm-hmm. superior. Mecha maid. Yep. Um, who is one of my favorite characters in this comic, interestingly. But they're fighting some par- parasite Kinetic. thing. Um, and Wolfman just comes in and helps him. He just beats the shit out of the thing, chops its head off. And they're like, wow, this guy like really knows he's like kicking ass right now. Yeah. And he's not really talking to anybody. He just goes in there, he kicks ass, and then he leaves. Right. And they're like, where did he go? Wolfman just kind of disappears, goes up to Zachariah, and Zachariah's like, oh, you're not feeling very sociable right now? And he's like, yeah, I just, uh, I'm just, i still new to this. I, I just thought it was best just, just to leave. You know. Well, I, and even, Z- I mean, he asked Zachariah, like, where were you? Like, how come you didn't come down and help? Yeah. And he says... I'm an uh, old man, and I... Um, harbor. Harbor vi- uh Violence and vampires, and vampires aren't, aren't usually. usually treated very warmly. Right again, yeah. him being very kind of standoffish and and oh. weird and mm-hmm. yeah yeah. That's, and then we get the next page where Gary's Gary... getting ready to head out for his nightly patrol and and meet up with Zachariah and Rebecca's like. Uh, she really needs to go so soon, and she's in her little. She's wearing. It's such a mom thing to wear, isn't it? Is, it? it is. Like it is mo- like a. It's mom, mom lingerie. Uh, so they're about to have sex, and then as they're doing it, it shows the full moon in the background, and I don't think that either one of them came to fruition. Well, I don't know. I mean, the very first picture right here is mm-hmm. is his. No, he's changing. Uh, he he, you know, his ears start going, the teeth come out. And it shows him, uh, you know, Rebecca screams, but then he just, he doesn't attack her. He he jumps out the window. And he's and, on top of her. His yeah. werewolf penis may still be inside of her as be. he's transforming, which would be. would be interesting. That would be interesting. You know what I mean? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, he jumps out the window and then it shows Sergeant Superior, who we had seen as a part of the uh, Actioneers just, you know, moments ago in the in, in this same issue. And he's flying around, and he lands because he sees Wolfman. He's like, hey, man, like, you know, I appreciate you helping us out earlier. And he's just kind of talking to him. and I just wanted to say thanks. Yeah, I just, yeah, just wanted to say, give you my gratitude. And then you turn the page, and Wolfman punches a hole right through his body. Right through his fucking rib cage. And kills him. You see a heart. You see a liver, a spleen, intestines. Kind of. Yeah. 
The page before that, though, I think it's kind of funny. Like, the way that he's looking at Sergeant Superior reminds yeah. me of the way a dog would look at you, like, tilting its head back and forth. You yeah. know what I mean? If you're like, oh, what are you doing? The dog's Sergeant like, Superior is, like, talking for a while. And it, and Wolfman, Wolfman is just, like, like, staring at him. He's like, I'm going to fucking... He's I'm going to... It's so hot, hot. I'm going to fucking... And he's talking, like... <laughs> Good evening, friend. It's good to see you again. <laughs> and then it shows Wolfman snarl. Out on patrol? That's pretty old school. Nice. We didn't get a chance to thank you for the help the other day. I saw you down here and just wanted to say... And then... Yeah. Punch straight through the chest. That's how that issue ends. So that's the end of issue two. Again, getting better and better. The cliffhangers at the end of each issue. Yeah. Issue three was I, where I thought the the story really started to pick up, and we started to get more, more of him. There is one thing in this issue that I did not like at all. Well, I, let's start with so Gary's just sitting there on a briefcase with it. He looks disheveled. He's not shaven. He's in disheveled. His, he's in his lair, uh, and then Zachariah pulls up with a fucking wolf mobile. Yeah, that's the one thing I didn't like. I hate that. I hate the Wolfmobile. I fucking hate the Wolfmobile so much. Well, the good news is it's the not really done. called the Wolfmobile, but it's just, I mean, yeah. It's fucking called the Wolfmobile. Okay. It's absolutely called the Wolfmobile. What okay. else would it be called? I'm just saying. The, he, Zach Ryan we're here, said we're the here for the news. facts, Bill. And, uh, it's, I mean, they don't call it Wolfmobile. We can call it the Wolfmobile. We could say it's fucking called the Wolfmobile. It is. On the record. Okay. It is called here the it Wolfmobile. Is. It's called the Wolfmobile. Okay. Deal with it. You heard it from us. Women you heard are, it here first. Are, uh... So he's so he's pretty pissed. Um because Zachariah has been gone for two weeks. Yeah. After this he, was, after this he was killed Sergeant This was Superior. after um he you know, like we said, and uh he, he killed Sergeant Superior, uh he lost control and he's he's it's been two weeks since he's seen Zachariah. He he freaks out when he sees Zachariah get out of the Wolfmobile. Um and says, where the hell were you? It's been two two weeks. You know, Do you have any idea what I've done? Zacharias says, I know exactly what you've done. It's complicated. I think I made a mistake. And then, again, he explains how he loses control once a month and how he wanted him to feel that. He wanted like, him to feel guilty. And he's like, I, I knew he, want, he wanted him to feel, feel the, like the weight of that and how important it is that. He said, I wanted you to respect it. Right. I wanted you to respect the, the, the feeling of being out of control. I thought you'd just stay on your property, run through yeah, the woods. Yeah, he's like, I, I know you would never hurt your wife or daughter. You still have some kind of control while you're in that state. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he didn't think that it would go as far as him killing another another hero or human or, or what whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, you can still transform, you can control yourself as Wolfman, but once a month you can't control yourself. And you, and what's interesting is that he talks about, like, Zachariah said, um, I thought you'd stay on your property, run through the woods, hunt. I didn't think that you'd uh, hurt anybody. You retain a bit of yourself, even in that state. Uh, you, I, know, I knew you would never hurt Rebecca or Chloe. I knew that you were safe. You had never killed before. And then Wolfman says, uh, I'm not so sure that that's true. Right. And because it, sh- and it, shows, it shows a f- flashback of the man that he um, may have killed in the first issue. We don't know. Like we said, it just shows him kind of lunging at him and then it cuts out. Um, yeah. And, and Wolfman, he, was, he goes on to say that he thought that it was just kind of a dream and about how he, he encountered a man in the garden. Um, but he doesn't really remember where it went from there. So we still don't really know yeah. if he died or not. <clears throat> right. So the next couple of pages are more him and Rebecca talking about how's work going. He's, he keeps saying that it didn't go well. And um, he says, we're going to be fine, I promise. You find out that's not the case in a little bit. But then you get the first page of Zachariah driving in the Wolfmobile. And... D- he so, looks very Batman, like kind of like Red Robin. It looks, it looks, yeah. Well, I think the the seatbelt is, yeah, it says, yeah, it has the Wolfman on it. But that's what makes it look yep. kind of. He's like in a. I mean, this like is kind of cool. So I mean, Wolfman's like cargo in the Wolfmobile. Like yeah. he he pushes a button and he launches him out of a catapult. It reminds me of a toy, out of, yeah. like a McDonald's toy. Yeah, like he gets launched out through the top of the car. Again, very like kitty, kid-ish. You know what I mean? Like comic book, mm-hmm. animated cartoon kind of thing. Which um, is nothing wrong with it. But still cool. I mean, I, again, I Jason, really care Jason Howard, car, anytime, but... anytime that you see Wolfman leaping through the air and his arms very are elongated, stretched, that's like yeah. the, uh, that's why 
I think that that's what makes his um, art unique. And if you look up the pinup of, um, of of Invincible again, it looks like you can. It looks how it looks like Invincible is moving the same way that Wolfman moves. I think that that's what kind of makes Jason Howard's style his style is when he's jumping forward. It's very long. Right. Their it's the 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 cam- if there were a camera, it would be closer to the hand. Right. And then the arm would be long. Right. And back. Yeah. Let's talk about this fucking action sequence and how he saves this girl. So there's this guy, um, who has blades coming out of his arms and he's got a, a hostage essentially. And uh, what's his name? Is it kinetic? No, that's the other guy. This is throw kill. Thrill Kill? Yes. This is Thrill Kill? This is Thrill Kill. He's been in Invincible before, hasn't he? Has he? I don't know. I don't think so. No? No. Well, okay, so Wolfman does the, the you know, let the girl go, and then this guy, Thrill he's Kill. Ch- leaving, he's running away from the police, and he's saying, you yeah. know, you're, he's holding on to the girl and talking to the girl, saying, uh, you're my ticket out of here. Right, so then he, he says, I'm going to drop the girl, and he says, don't. He says, no, this is fine. I drop her. Then you'll save her. She'll be okay, but you got to let me go in order to save her. It'll be great. You'll see. And he throws her off the building. So instead of Wolfman diving after her, he frickin', frickin', he frickin', he frickin', frickin', he spears him off the building. Throw kill. He threw, he, he spears yeah. throw kill off of the building. Uh, not even, not even going for the girl yet. And she's falling, she's plummeting to her death. And then he takes... Thrill kills slashing at him in the air. Wolfman grabs grabbing his, him and like his face and slams it into the side of the building to slow his speed falling, down as right. they're falling. And leaves him there. So his head is stuck in the building. And then he fucking flips around. Imagine this. So he, he flips around onto Thrill Kill's body and then jumps off of him, as in like you would be if you were in a pool. So speeds up, catches the girl, and then, you know, digs his claws into the side of the building. Slows down and slows down and then stops right before the end, dude. This right here, I want, I want to see this in a fucking movie. Like yeah. it looks so badass. That's a, that's a cool page. That would be a cool page to own. Oh, this is cool too. The background. What does it remind you of? This is, it's so uh, weird. It's very that you, green and, and green. Yeah. Look at green background. Why is there fucking green? Red. It's just like splashes of color in the background. Yeah. It's Batman. Batman did that. The Batman. Oh, yeah. Remember how it'd be like a green, like, a yeah. green fucking background, or like yeah. a blue background, right? Just like solid colors in the background. Yeah, very cool. Uh, what was cool about that too is that they land, and and the woman that he saved is like, "Thank you, thank you, thank you." Police come out and pull a gun on Wolfman, and she's like, she like kind of bitches them out and says, "You know, uh, he says, what are you doing? Put put your gun away, jerks." And the police are like, ma'am, please. And she's like, don't ma'am me. This guy just saved my life. I'm not going to let you shoot him. Uh, just look at him. He's not here to hurt me. And then they turn around and Wolfman's just gone. So he's already kind of gaining a reputation for being a, a hero, kind of. Mm-hmm. There's, people still don't really know too much about him. Just, um, yeah. Let's, let, you know what? I have, a, I have a better word for the action in this comic book. The... Kurt... Why, why can't I think of the word? So you don't have a Choreogra- word. the choreog the choreography. Yeah. The choreography in it is fucking awesome, and you can tell what's going on. You know, you don't have to see swoop lines or anything like that, or need an explanation as to what's going. Like you can see exactly what's happening. Right. And th- I th- I would think that that's Jason Howard. You know what I mean? Because I I would assume the script is something like, you know, throws girl off building, he tackles the guy off the building, stops him. And then saves the girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then Jason Howard maybe does the details. But just the Perhaps. choreography in this is, is is badass. And then we get our first introduction to like the wolf pack. To, to the wolf pack and more lore of the comic. So now now we're beginning to spread out a little bit more to the mystery of like what what being a werewolf is actually about. Yeah. That so. there are other wolves wolf werewolves out there and in, in, in kind of their lifestyle. Um they keep they show up and they're they're very like defensive. They're like they're there to attack. They're there to kill Zachariah. Right. They're there for Zachariah. The the main one is is like you protect this one. Jacobson. Um, yeah, Jacobson. And like all the other werewolves are really like, well, he's an elder brood. 
He keeps they call the uh, they call Wolf, they call Wolfman, Wolfman Elder Brood. Right, and they're brown. That should be noted too. So all the other werewolves are brown, and Wolfman is like gray or white, which is probably due to being Elder Brood. So Wolfman gets pummeled by these guys. Mm. Oh wait, no, no, he no, no, oh, not, not they yet. They get not pummeled yet, not yet. by Wolfman. Yeah, Wolfman kind of like beats right. the shit out of them. Zachariah turns to Mist, which is like the second time you see him do that. Um, we did not come here to challenge an elder brood, but we will be ready for you next time. Another time, Zachariah. So you don't know why they, they're after him, but there is a history there. Yeah. You know, and you don't exactly know why they're so pissed off at him. But Zachariah, he looks guilty. You know what I mean? Like he, he doesn't look like he doesn't care. He looks like he did something wrong and he knows it, you know, which kind of makes you feel like maybe he's not so bad. Once the bad shit happens, because he's never, like, a bad guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. TJ? Uh, one thing I think we may have passed, too, is one thing that um, I wanted to talk about is Zachariah was talking about his abilities, and, and he talks about, you know... Um, oh, his powers as a vampire? As a vampire. Yeah, I like he that. Says, I like I, that uh, he's like, I, I must admit, I do like how current writers have deemed the mythology too silly, how they think it's 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 silly that... Um, vam- vampires can turn into bats, even though I can turn into a bat. I think I think it's funny that they they find it silly that vampires can turn into mist, even though I can turn into mist. So, yeah. And then they said, um, even current writers will talk about how uh, cutting off the head of a vampire will kill them. But he says, I'm pretty sure I can survive someone cutting off my head. He's just too scared to try it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and then, you know. So back to the story where they're they're doing the uh, they just got attacked by the wolf pack and then he asks them you know what was that about and he's like oh don't worry about it you know I've done things in my past too we won't bring it up and then he turns into a bat and flies away. Yep. So the next page, Rebecca, Gary at dinner or breakfast, and this is when you find out how shit really is. So Gary's talking about the meeting at the meeting the other day uh, with the board. They decided I was a lightning rod, r- lightning rod for bad press. And then I was hurting the company, so they voted me out of the company. So essentially, he's jobless. He was terminated. He got a good severance package, whatever that means. Um, but they also are um, blaming him for like tax evasion and and um, like money laundering and stuff like that. And they Not come laundering. to seize, the, seize his house. Yeah, he's evicted essentially. Like right. he's homeless, so he's kicked out of his mansion, and he has no job. So and that's how issue three ends. So issue four, um, the cover is Wolfman bleeding out of his chest with a ton of blood. So this this should get interesting, right? Hmm. No, 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 no. I think so. so it starts with Rebecca taking Chloe to the mall, and this is where Chloe's like, this is so stupid. I, I well, want to go to an outlet they, mall. This is no, dumb. They said... Like she knows that this is going to be her new home. Well, they've been living in a hotel, right? Yeah. Uh, and then they're like, oh, "We're gonna, I'm gonna take you to the, to our new home." And then they pull up at a mall, and she's like, "Like, why are you serious? Like, I have to get dropped off on the bus at a freaking mall. Like, right. It's bad enough getting dropped off at a hotel every day." Yeah. So Chloe's kind of a bitch. And she no, I mean she's attitudey. I don't like think her. Think about you at that age, and if you were living at a mall. Like, I mean, she she has. I think it's realistic reactions here. Yeah. None she of her... even says like, "I hate to be like." I understand that we're going through tough times now, but. But, like, this is tough on me. You know what I mean? I can understand that. Yeah. She's so, a teenage girl. So, but she's she's brought into the lair and introduced to Wolfman for the first time. Who is wearing a Nike tank top? Yeah. That's that's some fucking product placement right there. Yeah. Weird. I yeah. thought that was interesting. So, Gary reveals to his daughter that he is Wolfman. Tells her, you know, don't freak out. I'm not going to hurt you. You know, um, and she doesn't take it very well. She's kind of left there in shock, and and they they decide to give her some time. Um, Yeah, and that's kind of where it ends uh, there. Kind of goes from, you know, Wolfman going back out on patrol and again getting attacked by the wolf pack. Uh, They're fighting him. Uh, It's kind of a little bit more even this time, but in Mm, in the end... Not at all even. Well, yeah, I mean... Jacobson, um, like... Beats the shit Gets out of him, and, and he even says, him. "One day, your powers will be such that you never succumb to such a beating, and when that day comes, I may regret this. But right now, 
there are more pressing concerns at hand. Right. So he was kind of winning at first, but then, you know, Wolfman came back and ended up getting the upper hand uh, mm, and put Jacobson no. on his ass. Not yet. Not yet. So Zachariah comes down and intervenes and he says, transform right now. So then Gary switches back and then goes right back into wolf form and he's healed entirely, but he's like dizzy, still kind of incapacitated. So this is when we find out what Zachariah did. And essentially, um, the Jacobs. Jacobson is, is explaining that, that vampires can't control their thirst and that if they drink from a supernatural being, they can go longer without drinking blood and they get more powerful. And he's like, but werewolves hunt in packs, and so I almost, love the reveal. Well, in this. it's not only really that; it was, it was, you know, you'd, you'd have to, he'd, ha- he'd have to find someone that was alone, vulnerable, vulnerable like my daughter. Right. So Zachariah killed, killed Jacobson's daughter. Daughter drained her of her blood, and now, the, the, okay, so Gary didn't know about this. Right. But but this so was another the, secret that Zachariah was. Keeping. But this was a plan from the beginning, this ambush, and then Zachariah coming down, and then him saying, "I trusted you. You kill you killed a girl. I can't believe that I trusted you." And then, you know, he's like, "Gary, please, you and I are alike." We and then the next page is Wolfman chopping Zachariah's head off and murdering him, and his head plopping on the ground, plop plop plop. Um, which was all part of the plan. Right, and then Jacobson's like, you know, you did the right thing by killing him. We're going to take his body back to our people. His head, yeah, they're going to take his and, head. And put it on display. And Wolfman says, no, you know. Let me dispose of the body. I, I, I owe him that much for, for my betrayal. Um, but in reality, it turns out, you know, you turn the page and, and Zachariah reappears uh, from mist form into, you know, into physical form. But it took a lot out of him. Yeah. He, he said, I'm fine. Drained. It took a lot out of me. I just need a little bit of blood. And then Gary says, tell me, is what they said about you true? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, it, like you said, it was a plan from the very beginning. Right. But he He's, didn't know about that story. So, right, like, but he didn't know about the story. How, I mean, how would you react to that? How would you react to that? I think that I, um, like, we'll get into later on what actually happens. But that's kind of when I would have been done with Zachariah. Yeah, right that's when that's what I'm saying. That's when I would have been done. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know enough about you. I thought that I think that the secrets that he holds and and everything that, like, I mean, I guess Wolfman kind of had a reason to trust him just because of he he helped him out and kind of showed him how to use his powers and stuff. But I don't know. I feel like other than that, he he's never really given Wolfman any kind of other reason to trust him. They they became friends and, but. Yeah, I don't know. Way yeah. too many secrets for me to continue that uh, that friendship. Right. So, last last part of this book, the Actioneers see footage of what happened to to Sergeant, Sergeant Superior, Superior, where uh, you know they they see uh, camera footage or, or surveillance footage of Sergeant Superior getting killed by Wolfman on the roof, and then. Zachariah going into a mansion pulls a book out. There's a secret little area entrance, uh, and he says, "All right, pal, I'm really." I mean, he's drained after what yeah, happened. Yeah, I'm so sorry to do the... this. Really sorry. I was saving you for a special occasion, so obviously he's not sorry. Like he had plans on fucking drinking his blood, uh, but if I don't get blood soon, I could actually die, and you wouldn't want that, would you, Sergeant Superior? Turn the page. It's the very last page of the comic is uh, or of the issue is Sergeant Superior. Lay, sitting there passed out in chains uh and he says he's like you wouldn't mind that would you sergeant superior i thought now I, or i thought not now wake up i could really use a drink and that's how it ends so he's not really it's not looking good for, uh, for zachariah as a good guy yeah i'd say that he's hiding a lot of a lot of things this I laughed out loud when I reread this. Yeah, this so was the funny. Begin- you read this too? This is yeah. so the beginning of issue one. So it's it starts off in like a news press, and they're trying to, to see if they can get an interview with Wolfman to find out whether or not he's a hero or a villain. Yep. And um, this guy busts through the fucking wall, and he says, You may know me as Erector, and if that seems like an ill-suited name for me, it's because you retards got it right. <laughs> Got it wrong. I'm Eruptor, 
And the guy looks like he's got like magma in his hands and coming out of his mouth. Yeah. Um, uh, you guys couldn't take the time to check with the police. My name was on the file. Was your proofreader out sick? I'm a laughing stock. Thanks to you people. Now I'm going to watch you all roast. And he starts attacking them. Wolfman comes in and basically says, you know, the one good thing about um, about busting through a wall is that it's a cool entrance, but unfortunately makes a lot of noise. That's kind of what got Wolfman's attention. Yep. So he, he so up. so Gary he again he's he's a really good hero. Like he he takes him, throws him outside, he's so smart. he's not yeah. yeah, and throws him into another building, and then that instantly him knocked him people. out. And then he goes back to see if they're all right, and that's when they're like, oh well. Obviously, I you're guess a good he's guy. a good guy. Yeah, because originally, the, uh, the on the first panel, it showed the newspaper that said Wolfman, um, hero or villain, and then after he saves him, you turn the page and his wife, ha- Gary's wife, has the paper, and the cover of the paper is Wolfman dot dot or slash hero. So he affected their opinions and, and changed the changed the news news yeah. story. So then, then we get more action here action they're fighting somebody who looks very much like robot but is actually yeah. called vault. vault um and i loved this part mecha maid so mecha maid touches after they're all trying to to fight you know this thing vault and failing and Mecha Maid says, okay, that took about an eighth of a second. It's embarrassing how simple his armor is. Very low tech. Okay, watch this. <laughs> she, she touches him. She steps away from him. She's like, okay, watch this. He's going to walk into the nearest police station and turn himself in. This is great. And then the guy's like, what? I can't. And then... And as he's walking to the police station and he's like... Turning, You'll pay he, for this. Yeah. Vault will get revenge. But like walking He's just into walking him. to the police station because <laughs> obviously there's some kind of... Mind control? No, no. Can, Mecha yeah. Maid controlled his armor. She oh, like yeah. hacked. Yeah, okay. she ha- hacked okay. his armor, and that's how he was. He was able to do it. Yeah. Um. And then they're just continuing to talk about getting revenge on on Wolfman for what he did to Sergeant Superior. For, yeah, for what he did to Sergeant Superior. And then uh, this this is this is kind of nice because Gary Wolfman continues to ask Zachariah. Questions about the wolf pack. Yeah, about what do they mean by Elder Brood? Like, why don't you ever have time to talk to me about this stuff? Like, I want to find, I want to find out what more about this curse. And he tells him that being an Elder Brood basically means that you were, you were brewed by an elder. Uh, you you came from one of the original werewolves. Yeah, you were, which inf- makes you ridiculously stronger than any normal werewolf. And then they talk about like, well, um. About the possibility of maybe tracking one down, tracking down the person who who turned him, which Thank again him. could have been some sort of plan from Zachariah from the start. It could have been a plan from Zachariah, or there could be. Uh, they discuss in this conversation about how maybe the um, elder who changed him had his own kind of agenda. Why he chose him, um, because Zachariah says that he, they can kind of see things in people. That others can't there, there's a reason why he was chosen, right? And, and but then he says it could make no sense. It could be because you have brown hair. True, you know what I mean, right. or it could be because you're special. Like right. we just don't know. So you get more action. He's fighting someone named Construct, which looks a lot like Juggernaut. Who we see, um, he gets beat up by, or um, I'm, he I'm beats sorry. up the capes. He beats up capes. You see, uh, Kid Thor, um, prominently in the in the picture, just completely passed out. Um, which is is cool. It's cool seeing capes too because we see them here and there in Invincible. Well, and and at the end of this fight, because he does a good job of just destroying this this thing by tearing its head off, and it's like some nerdy girl it's inside. Just somewhat, yeah, some. Yeah. Uh, but then he says, uh, "Oh wait, I read about you in the newspaper. This is Kid Thor talking to Wolfman. Uh, seems like you're pretty good at this. I'm Kid Thor, and this is Red Devil." Uh, I know we work for Capes yeah, Incorporated. I know um, they're looking for more people for the night shift, and the pay is super decent. And that's funny because Capes Incorporated is always talking about how they're on the clock, yeah. how they get paid for what like they do, whatever they're doing. People. Yeah, and he, and Wolfman's like, yeah, maybe I'll think about it. I mean, he is out of a job right now, so mm-hmm. yeah. So and then uh, Zachariah notes that it's going to be a full moon soon, and. It would be time, a good time to lock himself up. And this is when 
Chloe sees him in the like she goes down into the lair and sees uh Wolfman in his uh like kind of in shackles like this thing that he made to kind of keep himself restrained and he's like freaking out and snarling and and looks real scary and it scares the shit out of her cuz she didn't know that once a month he can't control it so she freaks out and that's um that's where it ends or Rebecca comes in and kind of kind of tries to console her and says don't worry he's not going to hurt you and that's kind of where that ends yeah so she's still having issues with this she's still not taking it well well, obviously, her dad's a werewolf. Right. I think she's the only person that's acting. But it's acting. been some time, and she's still not... She hasn't adjusted It hasn't yet. been some time. It's been, like, a month. That's... That's... Yeah. That's some time? TJ, I'm going to tell you that I'm a werewolf, and let's see how much time it takes you to acclimate the fact it would that... Take, I don't think it would take that much time for me. I'd be like, oh, that's fucking awesome. Like, you can control it, and you're kind of a superhero, and you're in the paper that are calling you hero. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I guess so. So, the beginning of issue six, we get to see the kind of person Chloe is turning into... Who, spoiler alert, turns into somebody pretty important in the comic book. Um, mm-hmm. But she she loses this match, and she's trying to be nice with this person, and she's making fun of her, and she just fucking hits her across the face with her ten- tennis racket, breaks her nose, Cause blood's there's everywhere. Ru- there's rumors. Um, she beat this woman in a tennis match, and, and now the woman who she beat is say, basically telling her all these rumors that are going around about her. Your your mother's probably sleeping with uh, the dean to keep you in, in school. Uh, I hear your dad's out of work, and you guys are broke. And she comes from a very um, snooty kind of school where you know everybody's rich, so they all hate her now. And she just beats the shit out of her. Yeah. And and holds the racket over her while everyone is watching and says, say it again, go ahead, say it again, I dare you. Like, she's kind of badass in this moment. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. So, and she's being pushed really, really far. But she's being more angsty and and all that stuff. And Gary, or, or Rebecca and her, they're talking about how she kind of hates Gary for, you know losing his job and 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 that they're in the position that they're in because she you know has no friends essentially and that so this is putting even more strain on gary and rebecca like you can you can tell that that rebecca is starting to get a little tired of all this right and a little worn thin and then we get my favorite part in this whole volume and if you'd like to explain the action that's about to happen. So they're running off of a roof, chasing a car that's uh, running away from the cops. Wolfman leaps off the building, slams onto the hood of the car, which just gets crushed, annihilated. You see a guy fly out of the windshield. Wolfman grabs onto his ankle while he flies while he's out. air, like torpedoing out of the car, grabs a hold right. of his ankle. And then flips around and like... Catches, cradles him. catches him and cradles him and then lands and says, why Why were you running from the cops? And he says, I wasn't running from the cops. I was running from him. And this is the guy whose name is Connect. Kinetic. Kinetic. Um, so in between the action scene, you get what I was talking about, Rebecca. And it never delves into this anymore. This is the only time you see her get a little... Like, is she cheating? Like has she cheat has she cheated before? I don't this is one of the things where I don't really remember where this ends up going, but what happens is Shh. in this she's meeting up with a guy at a, a restaurant. At a restaurant and he he's like, Oh, um, you know, this is a very fancy restaurant that you chose. Uh and he sits down and he's like she's like, Well, it's good to know that whenever uh I call you late, you you're you always kind of run to me that makes mm-hmm. me feel good she's very being very flirtatious well and, she, and he says well how is how is gary doing and then she goes the last thing i came here to do is talk about gary with sex eyes right with mom's sex eyes right meaning like do you want to like do me in the vagina she's wearing that that mom lingerie underneath, underneath her dress right yep sure. with granny panties yep but she says Depends. or he nate says nathan who was the guy uh so how you been i was surprised when you called i well, it's been a long time since I've heard from you, Rebecca, meaning that they have a past. Right. And that she's been probably a little unfaithful to Gary. And then, uh, okay, so 
The next page is another reason why I like Mecha Maid so much. She's she's walking and she's got a daughter. Well, you don't know who this blonde lady is first and foremost, right? Um, you know they're talking about going shopping and can we do it again as soon as I can find some time? Yes, thanks, mommy. I love you. And then the they hear a boom in the background and then the little girl says, "Please don't deactivate me, mommy. I can tell when you deactivate me. It feels cold. It's scary." And then Mecha Maid's crying and says, "I have to like." I'm so sorry, and then turns her off, essentially, and she just, like, disappears into nothing. Right. It's actually really sad. So she runs into Wolfman. Uh, Mecha Maid, again, just scans this guy and says, oh, you're a battery. Let me just switch you off um, because Kinetic, this guy, can essentially, if you hit him, he gets more energy. Right. You know what I mean? He he takes a step, he gets more energy. So she turns him off. And um, starts talking to Wolfman. Yeah. Talking to the, um, and Wolfman's like, hey, awesome. Saying, that was really awesome yeah. of you. You turn the page and the actioneers attack Wolfman, punch him into the ground, calling him screaming murderer. You're a murderer. Uh, you killed him. You killed my friend. Uh, and then just beating the crap out of him. Finally, Wolfman grabs the, his arm or her arm and says, back off, punches her. And they all just starting attacking him. Don't touch her freaking out they won't listen to anything that wolfman has to say um finally they say you know um i know why you're here and i'm sorry wolfman saying this to the actioneers i know why you're here meaning he knows that they know that he killed superior and he, he says and i'm so sorry more than you could ever know uh but it's not what you think. If you would just give me a minute to explain. And they're like, explain? No, you're a murderer. You need to pay for your actions. And they just keep attacking him. They won't let him explain explain anything. Um, keep punching him. Keep punching him. Uh, it's a couple pages of this where he, he continues to just try to explain. And each actioneer just kind of takes their turn with kind of having their way with him. Fighting back and forth. Uh, and then this comic ends with Sergeant Superior showing up saying, let him go. And then um, she says, Sergeant Superior, you're you're alive? And then it shows his red eyes and fangs, and he says, not exactly, meaning he's now a vampire. So Sergeant Superior didn't die. Not exactly. Not exactly. So he's a vampire. Right. Part of, uh, part of Zachariah's plan. Right. Which I don't remember what it is, because I don't remember anything past seven. But I'm going to read it when I get home. Because I don't remember anything. Okay. Uh, so, issue seven. The starts last, out with... The last comic. It starts off essentially right where... It left off. Yep. Uh, the actioneer, she punches him and says, what have you done? Um, Sergeant Superior, again, stops them and says, you know, you've got, you know, you got to chill out. Let, let me explain. And he kind of explains what happened. Um... But not, but not entirely. Like he's just being very vague, and he's like, "Go, Wolfman. I'll, you know, I'll talk to them." Well, he says, "Yeah, I mean, even Wolfman says, I thought, I thought I killed you." And he says, "For the most part, uh, you, but you left enough of me alive for Zachariah to bring back." Which then brings us to the next page, where he sniffs out Zachariah, and Zachariah is impressed with how with yeah. how he can like smell him out. Yeah. Uh, how long have you had him? Wolfman says. Zachariah says. Since you attacked him, I took him right away. And he says, like, why didn't you tell me this? You had him this entire time, and you let me live with this guilt? And this is finally when he's had enough. I mean, Zachariah just keeps defending it, and he says, technically, uh, you did kill him. That didn't change. It it was what happened after that I never told you about. He's like, you turned him into a vampire. What else are you keeping from me? It was the only way to save him, and it saved you tonight. You should be thanking me. I can't. And he says, "No, I'm done. Like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sick of the secrets. Uh, me I can't and you trust are through. You. We can't. I can't trust you anymore. Uh, our training is done. We're not working together anymore." And he leaps off the building, goes home, and his wife is there in the lair, and basically says, you "I'm know, leaving." Yeah, we're me and uh, Chloe are. We they they released the hold on our house. We can go home now. They released uh, the hold on our bank account. We have all our money back. So me and Chloe are are going to move back into the house without you. And he goes, what? You're leaving? You're leaving tonight? And, like, Chloe's sleeping. Like, what, what's going on? Like, 
And she's like, "We this has just been too much. It's obviously not working out. I'm not saying that we need to get a divorce, but we need some time off. Uh, and he's like, no, please, I'm going to fix this. Please don't go. And she's like, no, you, you need to just let this happen. He he explains, like, listen, I left Zachariah tonight. I told him it's over. Um, and she's she's really not having it. She's just kind of had enough. And she's she's ready to leave and kind of take time off. And he tells her, like, listen, I want you, you can go, but I want you to know how much I love you and I'm going to fix this. I promise you I'm going to fix this. She gives him a kiss and says, you better because I love you. And Too don't... much to let you ruin anything. Right. So there's still obviously something there. Right. Which is sad that it took this long for it to finally happen because then Rebecca is kind of packing up, getting ready. Zachariah kind of shows up out of the mist. Yeah, and is asking Rebecca to help because he needs to rekindle needs, his relationship right. with Wolfman. And she's like, what are you doing here? Like, why, why are you talking to me? You know, I never really liked you. I never trusted you. Um, and he's like, uh, you know, he touches her and sh- she says, get your filthy hands off of me and, and kind of smacks him across the face. And Zachariah's eyes turn red and his fangs come out and he goes, you, you struck me? And then... Bit slapped her, well, punched her, backhanded her, back, and back, said, how dare yeah. you strike me? And her head is literally broken, turned all the way around. You know, her eyes rolled in the back of her head. She's laying on the ground, blood. She's and, dead. Yeah. She's, and, her head, her neck is, is snapped all the way around. And Zachariah just gobbles her up. He, he I mean, he says, oh, God, please no, please no. So he's trying to not, I mean, he obviously made a mistake. He said, Rebecca, oh, no, I didn't. Oh, God, please no, but then he's just feasting on her. And then... Gary runs in. What did you do? So the the last thing that that we see in this of Zachariah and Wolfman, Wolfman tries to fucking chomp him, and he just turns into mist and disappears. And then it's Wolfman just covered in Rebecca's blood and screaming. And then that's what Chloe well, I mean, sees. Yeah, he, Zachariah disappears. Yeah. And he's no longer there. And... Wolfman is like holding his wife's dead body and he's like screaming and Chloe walks in and sees Wolfman holding her mother's dead body in wolf form and assumes obviously that he lost control and killed her and everything like that so then he he try he he doesn't even really try to explain like he just fucking leaves like he just walks away because what can you do at that point yeah and he tells and he tells Dunford you know just Take care of her. Please tell me no matter what happens that you take care of her. And if you guys remember in one of the uh, New Reader episodes that they read the crossover issue with Wolfman where he was on the run from the police for killing his wife. And this is this is the moment where that happened. Yep. So the crossover issue doesn't happen too far after this. I think it's issue 14 of Wolfman. It's between, it's been, it's between 12 and 14. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but of that, Wolfman, I think it was like fifty-seven of Invincible. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, so we get the the ending of the volume and the big fucking reveal at the end of the comic, and essentially you see all the actioneers. Well, I think that that was the big reveal right there. Like now he's on the run. His daughter, like you know, well you've got two. That's that. I mean, that. this is this comic's yeah. awesome. Like it's it's you get that it was big awesome, fucking thing. Yeah. And then you get, which I forgot, so I, when you think Wolfman, you always think about this scene. Zachariah killing Rebecca, right? and then him going on the run. I forgot about this part. Yep, it shows each individual actioneer um, decimated. Like, decimated. Kinetic is on the ground, and she's, you know, she's still barely alive. She's, you know, everybody else is pretty much dead. Well, they're all dead, and Mechamate is destroyed. Well, Kinetic is still... Well, no, they're dead, and then it shows her eyes open up, and she's a vampire. Right. So that's kind of... right. And the last thing we see is, it is done, my master. This is wrong. Zachariah is saying, this is wrong. This is all wrong. This isn't how things were supposed to happen. So obviously Sergeant, Sergeant Superior is the one that says, yes. it is done, my master. So basically, he's being controlled. Sergeant Superior is being controlled by Zachariah because Zachariah turned Sergeant Superior. Now... Sergeant everybody Superior else in the background, else. all of the actioneers, are getting up off the floor because they're all vampires now. Which means that Zachariah can control all of them. Right. Well, presumably. You don't presumably. know if he's just being manipulated. You know what I mean? Right. So that's where uh, volume one ends. As, if not more, eventful than the first volume of Invincible, in my opinion. Yep. Way more cool things happened in 
the first volume of Wolfman. Because the only thing that happened in the first volume of Invincible was the fight with Omni Man. That's it. Well, didn't it? I think it ended with. Uh, oh, it was the the death of the Guardians, like right. Omni Man killing them. That was one thing, and yeah. then this. I mean, this had um, him killing Sergeant Superior. That was fucking badass. Yep. And then it was. This had a lot. Of, it had a yeah, lot. Yeah, it had a lot of shit. Every, in it. every pretty much every ending to each comic was a pretty big cliffhanger. Well, it was a good cliffhanger too, right. like a good one, and one that kept me excited and 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 coming back for more. And I am excited because I literally don't remember the end of this comic. Yeah, at, it's cool. it's at gonna be all, cool to dude. reread it. So uh, uh, that'll probably be coming out. Um, you know, in a couple. Not too long. Maybe it might it might be a couple months though, because we got we still got new readers new readers coming up. Uh, we're gonna have new issues coming out soon. There's still no uh, news on when the next issue is gonna come out. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully soon. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, we're gonna be continuing this. So yeah. And and and, Re- and reread Wolfman. Re- read along with us, because uh, the next the next one that we do that we're gonna go over, we're gonna go over uh, soft cover volume number two. So yeah. Read that with us, and, and we'll be and, back. And it continues to, to connect to Invincible. Yeah. Like, more and more. Obviously, there's yeah, the, cross, the crossover. I think the next volume has the crossover issue in it. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, obviously, we, we've talked about countless times how much we love The Astounding Wolfman. Yeah. And how sad it's, it is. This is to... my favorite uh, side story of Invincible by far. So, yeah. Uh, remember that you can uh, uh, contact us on Twitter. Uh, we're on Facebook. You can... Uh, um, uh, message us on Facebook. You know we're on Stitcher, we're on iTunes, we're on you know um, SoundCloud. So yeah, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, until next time. Later. Start over. (laughs) Okay. Keep a cadence. Cadence? Well, don't do that. You can hear it. One, two, three. Hello, Hello, and and welcome welcome to the the Invincible Invincible Podcast. Podcast. Probably Probably the the best best superhero superhero podcast in the universe. You fucked it up. I did. (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Hello, Hello, and welcome welcome to the Invincible Invincible Podcast. Podcast. Probably Probably the best superhero superhero podcast in the universe. I am your host, TJ. You you have to stop. I was going to say, I'm your host, TJ, and say it with you. No, no, no. Probably the best superhero podcast in the universe. And And then I'll stop. All right, all right, all right, all right. And I'm not... Just go one, two, three.